Siobhan, thank you so much for talking to us for The Pulse. Pleasure. Good to be here. What was library science like before the internet, before all of this technology? So as far as I can tell you, um, because I came to librarianship actually quite late in my career, but it was very much focused on the books and how it is you related the information in the books and when you went into a library you were um, you had to go to a cal if you didn't go to the library you had to go to the card catalog and the card catalog of course was based on you know al alphabetized and then once you went in you would typically find your title typically by author and then once the author you would then find the of the the many titles by that author and then and then sort of lift your card and go take that Dewey classification if it was a nonfiction title and go to the shelves and browse the shelves and find what you were looking for. So that is still very much what it is you still do, but only there's no such thing as a card catalog anymore. But librarianship as a career still uses the nomenclature of the Dewey classification. So that still rests as a, as a sort of cataloging system for the material as they come into the library. So that's still the sort of backbone of what it is and how it is we retrieve material for the customer. Mm -hmm. What about in the past, if I were looking for a subject matter? Mm -hmm. I don't know who is written on the topic. Right. Let's say I'm interested in music and the brain. Right. How did I used to go about researching you, that? And, and you still do. You would, um, you would typically come into the library and you would sit with the librarian and she would conduct a reference interview, which still happens today, though less so, because most of, if you know how to use and query online information, there's, there's ways to get at it. So, um, so now you use, um, so you, you, used to, you would come in, you'd sit with the librarian, I'm studying amphibians, and I just want to write a basic paper, get to know amphibians. And so the librarian would absolutely know the collection and would take you over to that range of materials and pull some of the best items that that person could find, that, that, that the librarian could find. So that is what's in right there in front of you. And then um, once the records were digitized and online, the librarian could begin pulling up online records for you to, um, to read about as well. And we still have quite a bit of electronic material. So now what will happen is that um, we will bring you to almost electronic data electronic materials first because most of our reference materials are online. Mm -hmm. We still have some tactile materials, but the, but the bulk of the material has been digitized and are online. And so there'll be that retrieval process um, using our online databases. And, uh, and, the, and so the librarian will then point you to the, some of the best of the articles or best of the materials, and, and then we'll back it up with some of the materials that we have in the collection now. With everybody doing their research and searches online, mm -hmm. are we losing anything in the process? Is it a more superficial search? Yeah, it's a, it's a, big, it's a big concern for an information-based profession like librarianship. So what you need to be careful, so, so and probably some of the most interestingly challenging um, areas are naturally going to be health information. So. Um, not that this is a terrible thing, but it's not the best thing. So when you, when you come in and you want to query um, a pain in your left arm, um, and so what will happen is that you'll get some initial databases that are typically um, 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 forwarded by drug companies. So you're not going to, and, and then there's a promotion for their product. And you want to be very careful about databases like that. So, so typically when you're searching, and for librarians, we're of course, we know some of the best are the National Institute of Medicine and the um, National Institutes of Health and some of the more, what we consider very um, primary and important, well done databases and, and, and websites. So we, so we put together, typically we were searching for some of the best information to make sure that our constituents are actually looking at good information. So there's lots and lots of information, billions of terabytes of information. Um, but it's, it's, that, it's that piece that's what's good information versus not good information. And that's the thing where the profession is actually engaging on a much more significant way about still creating um, those sort of bibliographic profiles of what constitutes good information in particular areas. And so, so when I'm searching online, I can't be sure how the information was curated for me. 
Well, and you can't because there's always going to be there always has to be citations on anything right. that you're going to look at. You you want to look at the citations, and even, and so Wikipedia, which everybody loves Wikipedia, and Wikipedia is fine. But what you want to do is look at the citations at the bottom of the Wikipedia file and just sort of dig deeper and understand where who is filing this and and what are the sites that they're using and keep and going into those sites and keep keep mm -hmm. digging that way. But if I'm using Google, my mm -hmm. first ten hits. Fresh. Yeah. I don't know. They're usually advertisements, actually, and it's usually an advertisement for a company who is working in that field some way, shape, or form, and is going to promote their product in some way, shape, or form. So you want to kind of get away from the product and more corporate orientation of your of your searching and look at some of the more um, what, whom we committed more um, validated search um, engines and search tools. Siobhan, thank you so much for talking with me. My pleasure. It's good to be here, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.